Hey guys, it's SJ. I hope you're good. Thanks so much for swinging by my channel. Today is another positive discipline video. So I'm learning so much about positive discipline and gentle parenting and sharing it here on YouTube and just having the conversation with you guys and sharing all the good stuff I've been reading because it is really transforming, keeping my house really calm, cooperative. My kids are getting older, like my eldest is nine now. And and the problems get harder. The tantrums don't stop, but they get more annoying. <laughs> um, so I'm laughing, but I'm crying. Um, as we're going into half term, I was reminding myself about all my positive discipline techniques around whinging, because I don't know about you, but I find whinging probably the most irritating um, thing <laughs> that can ever go on with my children. I can't cope with it. It immediately makes me angry, annoyed, I'm just like, forget it then. And it always seems to happen on holidays, doesn't it? When you're trying to do nice things together with your children. And so I've had this light bulb thing where I've read about why children whinge and how it's different and how that means we need to um, react differently to stop and cope with the whinging. And it's so good, I find it really interesting. So I can't wait to tell you about it. And if you are interested in more positive discipline video, gentle parenting, do hit subscribe and I will link my full playlist below, which is kind of like an introduction to it, but there's like stuff for toddlers, stuff for older kids, stuff for how to get kids to listen and cooperate without yelling and all that kind of good stuff below. So yeah, whinging is the one guaranteed thing to get a parent's reaction, isn't it? Because it's just so annoying. And by whinging, I mean there's like, I don't wanna go. <laughs> I get that one a lot. I want chocolate. And it's just like this droning and whinging and whining. And it's about something really annoying. And often it's when you're super duper busy and you're just trying to get out the door, you're on a lovely day out and they just find the one thing to complain about and you just feel like, why are you so annoying? Why are you ruining things um, with this constant whinging? And the thing is the constantness of it. Um, and that's what's really interesting about how to stop that as well and how it just starts. It just seems to go on and on and on and on and on. Um, I read Super Nanny's website first. I know Super Nanny's a bit old school now and I know she's rebranding how she does things, but I'll tell you what she said on this original thing I read because I thought it was really awful. Um, and she said, um, it's about, you know, taking away um, your attention. So how I always read about bad behavior was that it's attention grabbing your children trying to get your attention, so you remove the attention, and the even negative attention. Um, that's what they want, they're attention junkies. And I just thought, yeah, our children want our attention. That is not a bad thing. I think that that's a lesson to us when we hear the whinging you know, um, or if anyone tells you that just after your attention, give them your attention. That is okay. That is what our job is to give them attention and to do it in the right way that we're mis that we're redirecting their behaviour. So that annoyed me in the first place, you can tell. Um, and then this is what they said. They said, turn your back to the whinging child. Make it obvious you are ignoring her by reading a book out loud held in front of your face. I just thought, do you know what? If I was whinging, I whinge, I complain, I start at my husband and I can kind of like, you know, when you're in that mood and you just start on something small or something tips you are over, could be nothing, could be anything, and you start and you start and you start and you're sort of nagging and nagging and nagging and nagging because you want some sort of confrontation. And if somebody then just puts the book up in front of their face, if my husband was just like, you know, yes, I might calm down, I might forget my mood, I might realise, okay, he's annoyed now and I don't want to have an angry person that I love be angry with me. Does it solve how I feel inside and the reason why I was poking and whinging and nagging? No. Does it make me feel reconnected to him? Absolutely no. I think he's an absolute dick and I'll probably tell all my friends about how awful he is <laughs> for doing that to me um, and ultimately it will start again it might be a couple of days later it might be a week later it might be that same afternoon I'll start again on something else because I haven't been able to um, have my emotion and I think that about whinging with your children what's the best thing I've read about this from lots of different um, psychologists and different pages and I'll link them all below about positive discipline is whinging is the first sign that your children has is feeling something. It's a communication. And um, the article I read about it, she's saying, you know, it's like there's a storm brewing. There's a storm brewing that hasn't yet got to a tantrum or yelling or a real defiant behavior, because they're coming to you. They're coming to you and, you know, they're not just trying to be annoying or get your attention because they're, um, I don't know, 
bad people who want their parents' attention, how dare they? <laughs> they are feeling disconnected and they're feeling um, a little bit helpless and they're asking for help for something else, but it's coming through and whinging. And the thing I read that really was a light bulb for me was that often whinging is actually them feeling disconnected from their parent in some way. And that's why the whinging happens so often during a nice time or the end of a lovely day. How many times have you taken your kids out on a really lovely day and on the way home or right at the end of the day they start to whinge, moan and complain. This happens to me so much. We're in the car on the way home and they start to moan, I didn't get to do that. I didn't get to see this thing. And then you're like, we've taken you on a lovely day out and all you do is think about the one thing that didn't happen, we may as well never do it again, you ruin everything, da da da. And it feels like they're just nagging at you about something lovely that's happened and that's because whinging often is this feeling of disconnection and loneliness, the same reason why I might nag and whinge at my husband, it might just be for some reason, not caused by them, not all, even always caused by the environment. I'm having an emotional low and that's okay because we're all emotional beings and it comes out in this whinge and often it comes up for children when they're starting to feel like I have had a lovely day with mummy and now I'm feeling a bit disconnected or it's the morning and I'm sort of at home and it's going okay but soon I have to go to school and that rumbling starts and the whinging and the whining begins. So think of it as that's why this is happening now at the end of a lovely day. And that's also why then punishment or putting a book up in front of our face is like the worst thing we can do because they're feeling disconnected already and that just pushes them even further away. They might change their behavior, as we said earlier, they might be like, okay, well, um, I won't do that anymore because things are going worse. I'm actually feeling worse than I was before, but it's not solving anything. It's just making them feel even worse piling crap on top of how they're already feeling inside. So what do we do? Like, do we just go, oh, I know why you're whinging. <laughs> but luckily I'm a Zen parenting guru. <laughs> this doesn't affect me. <laughs> no, I won't be doing that. I will be wanting to react in some way. Um, so what do we do? So you're gonna be dealing with this at some way anyway, whether or not that's just by dealing with trying to ignore them and not yell, whether that's by yelling and meeting them head on or whether that's by joining them in the whinging and like or wait until they go to bed and then do a lot of whinging yourself. <laughs> um, you're gonna be putting your energy into this. You think I've got to put my energy into this. Let's try it more positively. Let's try and stop the whinging now in a way that is gonna make this not turn into constant whinging for the whole of our time together. And think about yourself, sometimes I think about myself as a leader of a team. Like if I was at work, if I was a boss, um, and I was a boss before and I, there was a lot of whinging in teams as there are at work. But if a colleague is whinging, I don't ignore them. I don't sort of go, oh, well, I don't want to spend any time with you. I'm going to move you to the other side of the office on a different desk. What you do is you bring them in. You bring them closer to you. You have a one-to-one -one meeting. You take them for a coffee and you say like, how are you feeling at the moment? Something going on? And you listen to their issues and you engage with them. And you know, you do it calmly, you do it nicely because they're a colleague and you're less affected by them than your child. So put yourself into leadership mode, switch your brain into I need to manage this situation in a really calm and good way that's gonna end up with a really engaged colleague who's gonna want and cooperate with me for the whole rest of this project, which is half term, <laughs> or Peppa Pig World or something very, very important. Um, and it will really help you go, okay, let's do these steps. So the first thing you do is you very clearly, calmly, nicely state why they can't have what they're whinging about. So it can be, no, sorry, we can't have cookies for breakfast. That's not a breakfast food. Would you like Weetabix or toast? Um, and you're giving them your positive options or, oh, you can have some special crumpets I bought you there, your favorite. And you try to do a positive um, deflection from whatever it is they're really, really whinging about. Or, no, we didn't get to go to McDonald's today, but we did have that really great day out at Peppa Pig World. Um, why don't we put McDonald's in our diary for the next time we have a special day out? So you're sort of explaining it, you're doing a nice thing, you're saying no. And that's not going to stop the whinging. <laughs> um, it's not that easy. But that is the way we're going to end the whining in some way, because what it will do is it can tip them over into giving their real emotion. So what I was reading about was um, the whinging is that emotional kind of storm inside you. And if you never get to the point where you have your full emotion out in the same way as my nagging, <laughs> feel bad about my nagging there, um, I've never got my full emotion out, I've never had the, the tears, I've never been able to say actually I just feel really lonely right now, um, or actually I'm feeling like 
um, you're so distracted and busy all the time with work and you haven't got any time for me anymore or whatever I would like to articulate as a grown up I'm finding hard to my husband, um, my child can also get to that point. So with the no's, with the limits, with the calm and collected statement of what they can't do but what they can have, um, you might tip them over. They might burst into tears. They might, if they're a toddler, have a full on temper tantrum, screaming and shouting and banging on the floor, whatever it is that toddlers do. Um, or they might just storm off and disconnect from you totally and not want to talk to you for a while. But what you have done is you've got the full emotion there. Now you can deal with it. Now you can connect with them and actually make them feel understood, listened to and cared for. And if you put that energy into this now for 10, 20 minutes, half an hour, <laughs> an hour, <laughs> um, you will have stopped the whinging. The whinging cycle will stop. So how do you do that? So it's just simply by being there. It's so simple. Um, I talked about it in my, all my other videos about gentle parenting, just being there, being by their side, being on their side, being their emotional rock, rather than joining them in this whinging, whining, yep, they've got your attention and your whinging, whining, yelling back. No, they've got upset. What's really going on is putting your arm around them and saying, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Today feels a little bit much, doesn't it? Why don't we um, just do something really quiet the next day? Sometimes it's just putting your arms around them, letting them have a really good cry. Like how often do we say we all just need a really good cry sometimes? And that is really the same for our children. Um, but often when they're treating us this way, it's when we treat them badly back and then the connection goes so far away. You might get over, as I said, the one little whinge, then the whinging will continue, the whinging will continue, the whinging will continue. And they'll keep going back to how low they felt. This is like, putting it all out there, I'm sat down, crying my heart out, I just needed to say all the stuff that was going on in my head that's been building up a little bit, and then they calm down, and then they feel better, and then the next time they need to communicate something, they'll do it more confidently, more normally, and then your first tool, your sort of your gentle no, firm no, but with a positive um, option, will probably work the next time because they don't have to get so far. They know that they can do that with you without feeling the pressure and the judgment and the rejection. Um, and ultimately you've got that connection with them again in the same way that I then do with my husband or the way that as a leader would do with somebody on their team who was feeling a bit disconnected and um, unengaged with the team is bring them back into the fold in a way. So dealing with whinging is a funny one because I'm basically saying whinging is a precipice to a tantrum and that the tantrum and the emotion is where you're really going to um, be able to deal with the emotion and the behaviour. But I think it's really interesting and it did really help me because I find whinging so annoying. I find it nagging so annoying um, and really understanding it just helps me a lot. And I've put this into practice with my own children and I'm telling you it does work. I'm really, really being impressed and I feel like the whinging has really nearly stopped. And I feel like that's the big thing about gentle parenting for me is I feel like I'm not reacting anymore. I'm not in this reactive kind of jumping through the things and dealing with things day by day. I'm really taking that bigger picture and I'm building up a strong connection with my kids through this that's going to last us a lot longer. And that connection, and I want them to always say, um, not that they had a permissive parent or that they had a brilliant childhood with happiness and rainbows I want them to be able to say I always felt understood I always felt listened to um, and I always felt confident to um, express my emotions at home and then that's going to see them through our relationship through um, for the whole of our lives I hope so yes interesting one how to cure whinging or how to understand whinging and um, cope with it I think um, but I hope you found it interesting. I've been really interested in this because as I said, I find it so annoying. <laughs> um, and I found this so interesting because I've never thought about whinging that way before. Um, that what they're emotionally telling us is that they're feeling unconnected. And straight away, it gives you a solution, it gives you a way to behave back um, that isn't putting a book up in their face. Try not to do that one. <laughs> um, and do hit subscribe if you want more. Do let me know what you think in the comment section below. It is a nice, kind place. <laughs> you might not agree with this style of parenting whatsoever, but um, yeah, have a positive comment below. Lots of love, guys. Bye-bye.